my brothers and my sisters indeed Allah Azza wa Jal favored the believers and blessed them with the sending of the best of the prophets the best of mankind Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he came and he brought glad tidings he warned his people of that which was harmful to them he guided them to that which was correct he guided to them he guided them that which is good for their deen for their dunya and the akhirah what was good for them in this life and likewise in the hereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the Quran and indeed Allah Azza wa Jal favored the believers by sending a messenger from amongst themselves reciting upon them his verses purifying them and teaching them the book which is the Quran and the Hikmah which is the Sunnah of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَأَعْلَى اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مَكَانَتُهُ وَأَمَرَ بِإِتِّبَاعِهِ وَطَاعَتِهِ وَأَخْبَرَ مَنْ عَطَاعَ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ عَطَاعَ اللَّهِ That indeed Allah Azza wa Jal elevated his station by commanding the believers to follow him, to obey him. And indeed Allah Azza wa Jal has informed us in his book that whomsoever is obedient to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then that in actuality is being obedient to Allah qala Allah azza wa jal wa may yuti' ar rasul faqad ata'a Allah whomsoever is obedient to the messenger then indeed he is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa min ta'atihi imtithalu ma yuthbit anhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min sunnatihi and from his obedience is that whatever comes to us and that is established from his sunnah upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam authentically documented that the messenger did this or said this or commanded with this then it's for us to carry out that to carry out that action قال الله عز وجل وما أتاكم الرسول فخذوا وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا. Look at the station that Allah عز وجل has given the messenger and his sunnah. Allah عز وجل has said in the Quran absolutely that whatever the messenger gives to you, then take it. Whatever he brings to you by way of guidance, whatever he has given to you, then take. And whatever the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warns against, forbids you to do that thing, then we must stay away from it. This is the makan that Allah azza wa jal has given Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فأمر الله بأخذ بكل ما أتانا الرسول من العوامر والنواهي والتشريعات وأن تنتهي عن كل ما نهى الرسول. So it's upon us to follow that command of Allah to take everything which the messenger has given us and to stay away from that which he has warned against. قال الله عز وجل وما أرسلنا من رسول إلا ليطاع بإذن الله. And that is the nature of the prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that there was not a prophet, prophet sent except that they should be obeyed with the leave of Allah azza wa jal. This is the nature of the messengers and why they were sent. Al-Imam Sa'di, rahimullahu ta'ala, he says, wa fi hadha ithbati اسمة الرسل فيما يبل فيما يبلغونه عن الله لأن الله عمر بطاعة مطلقة. إمام سعد رحمه الله تعالى. He says this is affirmation 
that the prophets, they do not err when it comes to relaying the message, when it comes to relaying that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah has commanded us to follow them, absolutely. And Allah Azza wa Jal would not do that if there was error in the prophets. And these are things that we hear all the time. How many khutbas have we heard regarding the nature and the station of the sunnah? How many durus and muhadarat have we have heard? But that actual message of submitting to the sunnah and taking it totally and staying away from everything which it warns, then this is where we fall short. Had we followed these principles, all of us, and I am not better than you, and I address myself first. If we all followed that which what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with, with his commands, with his sunnah, and that which he told us to stay away from, then we wouldn't be in the predicaments that we are in today. We wouldn't be in the situation that we are today with ourselves and the mushkilat that we are all facing, whether it be with our families or our children or within ourselves. It is a pure way. Allah Azza wa Jal has laid down these foundations for us to follow. Look at the station. Sheikh Al Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, Allahu ta'ata rasul bi ta'atihi, ka kawlihi ta'ala, ya ayyuha ladhina amanu, atiyu Allah wa atiyu rasul wa uli al amri minkum. Sheikh Al Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he says, explaining the station of the sunnah that when Allah has mentioned to obey him he couples that obeying of Allah to obey the messenger alongside what he says obey Allah it comes also obey the messenger to show you the station of the sunnah and for those who have been appointed in authority over you they are great, great benefits of adhering to the sunnah. We'll mention some. It is from the means to gain the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every one of us is in need of the rahmah of Allah. Everything by way of what we have of khair is from the rahmah of Allah. So the wise one is the one that looks to the asbab and the reasons that that rahmah comes. The rahmah of Allah, that is the wise one. Sometimes we put our efforts in the wrong channels. If we have the rahmah of Allah, then we have tawfiq. And being obedient and following the sunnah will help you gain that rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal. Qala Allah Azza wa Jal, wa atiyu Allah wa rasul obey Allah and obey the messenger so that you may have rahmah from Allah you get that mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you want to be successful man arada al falah fa'alayhi bi ta'ati rasul you want to be successful this is the real success the real success is what Allah has told us is success. Every one of us that is sitting and witness what I am saying. If you think you're successful, or shall I address myself as well? Let's measure it with what Allah says. What is success? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ Verily those who believe in him. Man, Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, whoever believes in him, and they honor him, and they aid him, and they follow that nur, that light that he came with, that was revealed to him by way of his guidance. If you do this, they are the successful ones. That is what Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned. They are the successful ones. The ones that follow that nur, follow the light of the messenger 
صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الله عز وجل ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما whomsoever is obedient to Allah and obedient to his messenger then indeed he has gained a great success في الدنيا والآخرة and the greatest success as Ibn Kathir he mentions رحمه الله تعالى وذلك أنه يجار من النار ويصير إلى النعيم المقيم and from that greatest success is that he will be protected and have salvation from that hellfire. And his mushir, his destination, will be into a bliss that is everlasting, never ending. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from them. Wa sallallahu wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wal aqibati lil muttaqeen. ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد from the great benefits of following the sunnah loving the people of the sunnah there is tremendous reward in that loving the people of the sunnah and the head of the people of the Sunnah is indeed our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Lend me your ears to this tremendous athar and hadith regarding the loving of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Sunnah. The story of Thawban, Mawla Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This individual, as the hadith he mentions, كان شديد الحب لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قليل الصبر عنه. This individual he loved the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم حبا شديدا. Extreme love that he had for the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. Loved being with him and he could not be patient when he was away from him. Wanting and yearning. To be around the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. فأتاه ذات يوم وقد تغير لونه يعرف الحزن في وجهه. So on an occasion, Thoban, when he came to the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the color of his face changed, and you could clearly see the sadness. In his face, clearly, you could see the sadness of his face. So on that, فقال له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما غير لونك. So then the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he said to him, "What has made the color of your face change? ماذا? What's wrong? Listen to his جواب. If it doesn't touch your heart." Then you should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften your heart. For verily is an athar that is mu'athar. It touches the heart. Listen to what his answer was. So remember, he has sadness on his face. His color of his face has changed. So now we know, we're going to find out why. What came and what thought he had. So he said, Ya Rasulullah, ma maradun wa la wajhun. غير أني إذا لم أراك استوحشت وحشة شديدة حتى ألقاك. He said, "Oh Messenger of Allah, it's not the sickness that makes me sad. It's not the pain that I have. It's nothing to do with that. But rather, when I don't see you, if I'm not around you, I become very saddened. I miss you, O Messenger of Allah." Up until I see you again. This is what was causing difficulty. And then what made it even more severe is this following thought that came to his head. Then I thought, if I miss you to this degree and you're alive and this is my state, then the thought reached me. Then I thought of the hereafter. And then 
فأخاف then I fear أن لا أراك لأنك ترفع مع النبيين he said I thought of the akhirah and I feared that you will be raised or messenger of Allah with the prophets وإني إن دخلت الجنة كنت في منزلة أدنى and if look if and he's a sahabi and they don't even know of that yaqeen if they're going to Jannah. He said, if I get to Jannah, then I won't be on the same level as you. You will be with the prophets. So the thought is that I won't see you. And then he went on to say, وَإِن لَمْ أَدْخِلِ And if I was not to be entered into paradise, لا أراك أبدا I will never see you صلى الله عليه وسلم I will never see you again and that thought frightened him then Allah عز وجل brought down the verse وما يتي الله والرسول whomsoever obeys Allah and the messenger فأولئك مع الذين أنم الله عليهم then verily they will be in the company who Allah Azzawajal has bestowed his grace upon من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا they will be with the prophets they will be with the truthful ones the martyrs and the righteous ones and what a great companionship that is so yes following the sunnah Look at the fruits that can come from it. That with Allah, with his mercy. And we know that following the sunnah gains Allah's mercy. He's all connected. And that is the promise of Allah. You will be with the prophets. You will be with the people that you love. And to finally mention, even greater than that then. Wanting to be with the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is azim. To know that Allah Azza wa Jal loves you is even greater. And following the sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are from the means that will gain that love of Allah Azza wa Jal. قال الله Azza wa Jal قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني Say to them, O Muhammad, if you love Allah, then follow me. Then Allah will love you. And another addition, then Allah will forgive you of your sins. That is the condition as our ulama, when we were constantly with Shaykh Rabi, he constantly always used to repeat this verse. And he used to say, لا سبيل لله عز وجل إلا عن طريقة سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. There is no way that you will get to Allah. There is no way that you will gain that love of Allah except by following the sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like I said, the makan of the sunnah is azima. It's not enough time now for me to mention it here. But just know, as good as it is to follow and the great merits that we have to follow it, if you oppose the sunnah and you abandon the sunnah, my brothers and my sisters, then there is a severe, severe warning regarding that. قال الله عز وجل فليحذر الذين يخالفون أن أمري أن تصيبهم الفتنة أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم. Let those who oppose him, meaning Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, be warned. Be warned that a fitna will befall them or a very painful punishment we seek refuge in Allah from being from those who oppose the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as-salallaha rabbal arshal azim an yaj'alna min al-ittiba'a sunnatihi rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa awladina wa a'ilatina ameen aquli qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor al-rahim